Anatomy Trains is delighted to announce a brand new dissection live stream specialty class on September 18th, Lumbo-Pelvic Stability, a one-day layered dissection with Anatomy Trains author Tom Myers and master dissector Todd Garcia. The early bird price of $150 is held until September 10th. After September 10th, the price is $250. Come see the body's actual core for yourself. This course will be provided over Zoom webinar with multiple camera views, live chat, and Q&A. Visit anatomytrains.com to sign up. This episode is brought to you by the Massage Mentor Institute. Diane Metkowski, also known as the Massage Mentor, and Allison Denny, also known as Rebel Massage, have teamed up to bring you the Massage Mentor Institute. MMI is a collection of teachings and education opportunities from industry leaders around the world because your continuing education experience should be whatever you want it to be. They are building community one body part at a time, and they want you to be a part of it. Head over to themassagementorinstitute.com today to see more, learn more, and do more. About 10 years ago, I attended the World Massage Conference in San Diego, California. I was teaching at the time, and I brought my students there for a field trip. There were all sorts of cool side classes you could sign up for, and I had a free moment, so I did. It was a yoga Thai class taught by Heath and Nicole Reed. It was amazing. I have followed them ever since, and then, just the other day, I got to sit down and hear their story. Well, I'm Nicole. And I'm Heath. <laughs> I like you to speak for ourselves. So yeah, um, and we're we uh, we have a continuing education company called Living Meta, and it's a community based company that is coming together to blend the science and the senses in a way that elevates our own personal career and what we're up to and everyone else around us. What do you? How do you want to? I don't have an elevator speech of our, what we do anymore. <laughs> It has been evolving and, and it continues to evolve. And I think that's my favorite part of Living Meta is watching our, our business grow in ways that I had never imagined. Going from being a massage therapist to teaching, to being a teacher's assistant for massage therapy, and then figuring out, oh, I can be a teacher too. And how do I, how do, I do this on my own? And then how do we do this for groups? And then, and then it just gets bigger and bigger. And now that there's websites and global communities, we're reaching out in new ways. Heath and Nicole have a partnership in love and in life, and their company is called Living Meta. Their website, which outlines their list of accomplishments, is impressive to say the least. They teach, create videos, write articles, offer retreats, and are a wealth of knowledge for the massage and bodywork community. I, I would add that as part of living meta, and some of you might be familiar with the word meta, it refers to loving kindness. Mm -hmm. What Nicole and I are really passionate about is embodying loving kindness and not just at the table, which I assume that if you're a therapist, you are already oriented towards service and compassion. But how do we create loving kindness communities in dyads, but also triads and with friends, family, neighbors, community, strangers, and not only in therapeutic settings, but how do we live loving kindness? Talking with them, it became abundantly clear that they are in sync with each other and on their authentic path. It is almost as if they have known each other forever, but I knew that wasn't the case, so I asked them about their origin story. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've, we've told our relationship origin story a number of times. Do you want to start or? I, uh, I, let, I let, let you start this time. This will be fun. <laughs> well, I was dorm mates with Nicole's brother freshman year in college, and we were about three hours from the university to our hometowns. And we happened to our families live really close. So we commuted a lot. We went to different high schools, but didn't meet till we went to college. And so I was out on Vinny, her brother's backyard, hanging out with the guys. And lo and behold, the most gorgeous woman I'd ever <laughs> seen on the planet comes out. 
And Vinny says, this is my sister, Nicole. And like my jaw dropped. And like, for me, it was love at first sight. For me, it was like, who's this crazy guy on my back porch with the long (laughs) hair, the flower skirts, the painted fingernails, the silver metal boots. Like, who is this space cadet? I don't even, I don't even know what to do with this guy. But Heath was persistent and it worked. It was several months later till we started hanging out and following the end of that relationship. He we just in. kept showing up at my door. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hang out? It go away. It's pretty persistent. <laughs> yeah. It works. It did work. That's awesome. And it has worked. We're getting ready to celebrate our 20 year anniversary. <sighs> our wedding our anniversary. Wedding anniversary. This, tomorrow. Oh my God, that's tomorrow. Yeah. That's right. And, <laughs> and it hasn't always been easy. <laughs> well, and no, I, I find that the biggest investment besides my own personal mm-hmm. exploration has been in the, the growing and nurturing of our relationship. Relationship. And yeah. all the all the effort, all the energy I've ever invested in our relationship has paid forth innumerable priceless dividends. And if you are either single or you are in a committed relationship where you want to grow and evolve and the other person's interested in it too, it is worth the effort. It is worth the <laughs> challenges. It is worth going into uncertainty and the unknown. For me, at least, it is one of the most fulfilling, enriching experiences of my life is in our relationship. I think on my deathbed, I will count our relationship as one of my greatest successes. Yes. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Heath and Nicole seemed so well connected, in fact, that I veered off of my interview track and was curious to hear if they ever had any bad days. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> yeah, we fight, we argue, we disagree. Well, I mean, let me let me say what we do regularly is we disagree. And I would say we disagree probably, you know. Six, well, we work together, live together, everything. A lot of it, our life is really enmeshed and intertwined. So we spend a lot of time. Yeah. And even though we disagree probably most days than not, I think that speaks to our own unique inner proclivity about what's up for us. Like my, my essence, my soul's mission, my life's purpose may be a little different than every single other person on the planet, which is awesome. And in these ways that we might have disagreements or we might not see or believe or feel in the same way, We have a treasure trove of practices where we come back to each other with with authenticity, with appreciation, (laughs) with recommitting to favoring connection rather than criticism, blame, and complaint. Well, and I think that's been an evolution, right? Oh, evolution of our relationship when we first started. We were kids shouting matches, hurling broccoli and other foods at one another. Um, I don't throw as much broccoli as I used to, (laughs) but. <laughs> I, Heath would get mad and wouldn't say it and would whistle instead. So our evolution, our communication style, thankfully, as we grow older, we hopefully we grow a little wiser and we grow a little more savvy in in ways that we can connect. And I think that that is a testament of what we're up to is is our own personal evolution and choosing favoring appreciation over criticism. Okay, so besides learning how to not throw broccoli at each other, I wanted to hear more about how they got into massage and teaching. Just turned 21. We celebrated my 21st birthday together. We ended up, so we're finishing college together. We didn't get married until after college. Yeah, we'd been dating for about five years. And uh, usually Nicole defers to me with the historical timeline. numbers and timelines <laughs> so I can fill in the, the left brain stuff. Uh, when Nicole and I got together, we were staunchly anti-marriage. Who needs a piece of paper outside authority to tell us that we love mm-hmm. each other for life? Mm-hmm. And we were like, you know, rebellious. Like, I don't need some outside someone to tell me that I. Yes. Yeah. So that changed. when We went to massage school. Heath and Nicole met during their undergraduate studies at the University of Central Florida. They graduated and they were ready to start their lives. We worked in our careers. We took a, a gap year. First a couple months, we backpacked Europe with our, our the, tent and sleeping bag and training about 20, <laughs> 24 cities and 12 countries in 60 insane, days. We but it were, reinforced our relationship and our commitment to one another. I, I found out later that Nicole had made a deal with herself that that uh, European we tour survive this would make it trip, or break it. We can do this. Fortunately, I passed the test. Yeah, I passed the test. 
Um, but it, it wasn't actually till we were working in our fields uh, for about a year uh, and thinking that we would go and I was going to pursue a, a doctorate in psychology. Nicole wanted to get her, her master's in oriental medicine. And, and then something interesting happened. I looked around to all the different programs in the country to find the one that would best suit my interests in transformation. And if it had kind of a spiritual context and about holistic psychology, and I found one program that I really loved. Only one. <laughs> and the only one that seemed suited to me. And I, they, they liked my records and they, they liked all the essays and all the, the numbers I provided for them on, on the test stuff. They said, Oh, we, we'd love to invite you to, to do an, an interview. And we went to San Francisco. We were living in Florida at the time uh, to check out the school. And it was rainy. It Every was day. dark. The cost of living was beyond our, our wildest dreams. And we felt like, oh, this is hard. And so when the, I think there were, you know, multiple, there was a handful of candidates for the course, and there were a handful of professors group interviewing us. And when I was asked, how are you getting along in San Francisco? I told the truth that you know, this is really rough and uh, I'm, I'm meeting all this resistance and I'm feeling pretty overwhelmed and I, I'm not sure about this city. And happily, the not in the moment, but happily, they, they disqualified and rejected my application. And uh, so it sent us spinning on a whole new. What journey. are we going to do? We have our leases up in two months. We have the rental car. We have the U-Haul. We want to go somewhere west. We're ready to get out of of where we grew up. And and he threw in the idea of massage school out of nowhere. Just for me, it felt like out of left field and was like, you know, we could do massage school. We'll get it over with in like a couple of years. And then we can use this to, you know, work in towards our, our degrees, our masters and our PhDs or whatever. And we so went to massage school and blew our mind, um, mm -hmm. totally took us in a whole nother direction about who we thought we were, totally changed, how I could experience myself, totally changed. I learned so much about who I was and how to connect with other people on a whole new dimension. It was mind blowing, body blowing, heart expanding, and we both fell in love with the work. They landed in Salt Lake City, Utah, and their transition into the world of bodywork and massage became the foundation of what they have built today. Every single time, what I appreciate about us individually and collectively is that every time a door closed, we would, we would pause. Sometimes we would freak out. Usually <laughs> we would freak out. But then there'd be a moment of, okay, mm. what's next? What, what creation wants to move through me next? And something I've relied on for many years, and it's a kind of cool thing about the English language, is that the word reaction has the same letters as the word creation. And mm. so when I find I'm reacting off of a script, when I'm kind of knee-jerk, default, unconsciously reenacting, uh, an old script, I go for, where can I recreate instead? Where, where's the creative energy that can get me off that hamster wheel of reacting? The creation of their new lives began at the Utah College of Massage Therapy. Salt yeah. Lake City yes. uh, was in the late 90s. We had never met uh, a Mormon or heard the an acronym LDS, Latter-day Saints, uh -huh. never been. Uh, so it was a cool cultural shift. It's the first place that we'd ever driven on the highway and seen a bumper sticker that says drive friendly. We're like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's not thing. that's not like <laughs> how it was in East Coast, South Florida, where we grew up. Um, and and the more you know, we were in the West, and right now our our home base is in the Phoenix area in Arizona. We just feel this open expanse uh, in the land uh, that is like the Southwest, but mm -hmm. in and around the culture. For us, mm -hmm. it's super important that we surround ourselves with the, the people and the places that really speak to our heart, mm -hmm. that really nourish us, that we feel this mutual benefit, this mutual generosity between 
us in the land, us in our neighborhood, us in our community. You've probably heard those studies that say uh, weight Weight is uh, a lot of times determined by the community of people you hang out with. If you tend to hang out with healthier or unhealthier people, your body often reflects that. If there's different thoughts going on in the, the people you choose to spend your time with, a lot of times that's impacting your own psyche and psychology. So for Nicole and I, finding what is our intention and who else wants to play in the playground that is also interested in the same kind of intention? And that's what we look for. That's what we are doing in terms of creating these small localized communities, as well as global remote communities all around the planet. Heath and Nicole clearly found inspiration from their environment and they hit the ground running. Yes. I, it, well, it was happening, I think, simultaneously for both of us. As when we graduated our program from UCMT, um, we went right into working. I was working in a chiropractic office, and I think you were seeing clients uh, mm -hmm. at, like on the side going remote to their homes and things like that. And um, our teacher, I think, who was my first? I can't remember the first instructor that asked me to be their teacher assistant, but we both had someone request us to be their a teacher assistant since we're still hanging out in the area and we're working. Um, so we did, and we got to go through the whole program with different teachers. We started to ask, well, can I be a part of your class? Can I help and assist with, um, with acupressure? Can I help and assist in shiatsu? Can oh, I, I want to know more about cranial yeah, sacral. Let, let, me, let me retake can I, the program. Can I assist two you? Or three so we times. started just asking everybody, really. All our favorite teachers. <laughs> can we help you out? How can we help? How can we be a part of your class? Or how, what can we do for you? Just really putting ourselves out there, taking, taking those little scary first steps and sometimes getting a no and a lot of times getting a yes. And we got to almost, we got to go through the program almost like two more additional times, I feel like. Yeah. So we really got to soak in, marinate and embody the practices that we, that were really just headstrong at the beginning when we first graduated. It was just, you know, like all these ideas and techniques and mm -hmm. didn't really have a way to put them together quite yet. And having the opportunity to be a teacher's assistant and at the same time practice, um, really was a great way for us to ground the work that we were learning in the program that we did learn. And it, and from there, Arizona School of Massage Therapy opened and they were looking for teachers to, in their, to fill some positions. We applied and luckily they said yes. So then we started to teach on our own uh, out there in at the ASMT, Arizona School of Massage Therapy, which was um, where Heath and I really wanted to live was here Arizona. in Arizona. Yeah. So we were so excited when they opened up the school here. It wasn't necessarily easy going from there. Well, in the beginning, I think like a lot of massage therapists, like, we were probably we had four or five different jobs okay, because then. we didn't have one steady source of income. And in some cases we were doing things that we didn't really, wasn't our first, second or third choice, but we had to get food on the table and, and pay rent. So yes. it, it, it certainly was an evolution those first few years. And we had the incredible opportunity to, to relearn. To, we were taking continuing education, though, even when we were in our in beginning class, basic yeah, yeah, yeah. class. So I think that partly prepared us to just live a life of, of learning and teaching. Heath and Nicole continue to show up for themselves, for each other, and for the bodywork community over and over again. They've got an incredible website, they offer classes, they have a YouTube channel, they write articles, and I was curious to hear if any part of that ever felt scary to either one of them. One thing uh, that I experienced in my own life is that I don't get over fear uh, this idea of, of no fear is not something that I've experienced as a human or seen for those around me, uh, those who are really willing to be deeply vulnerable, honest, and, and truthful. Uh, however, I like to see fear as, as an ally, as a creative uh, collaborator. We know from science, physics, that energy isn't created or destroyed. Fear, all our emotions, have an energetic power, a frequency. One of my favorite quotes, I have a couple of favorite ones about fear. One is from Fritz Perls. He's the, the co-founder with his wife of Gestalt Therapy decades ago. He said, fear 
is excitement without the breath. Think about that. Fear is excitement without the breath. And if you remember a time when you've been a little anxious, nervous, scared, fearful, that kind of trembly, buzzy energy is very similar to the energetic frequency vibration of excitement and, mm-hmm. and enthusiasm. So the good news is with practice, it definitely takes practice. With practice, I've learned to get real familiar with my fear signatures, my early warning detector signatures. Uh, even like the, the first time there's a tension around my nose when I'm just starting to feel scared. So I first have looked for fear, not as a way to make it bigger, but as a way to befriend it so we can work together. And so one way that I work with fear uh, and and through fear, not past fear, is that I, I'll breathe. And this is when I'm conscious. I don't <laughs> recommend people trying to get rid of their big fears when they're scared. You know, this is why we meditate. This is why we do things like yoga and qigong. It's really easy to feel good when you're feeling good. Uh, And so part of what movement therapy or even meditation offers is that we intentionally stress ourselves, whether it be our focus or our body mechanics or or our breath, whatever, we intentionally stress ourselves out while we create an atmosphere of safety, of connection. And so for me, uh, breathing, my breathing practice uh, really helps inform the dialogue I have with fear. And Heath is pointing to a lot of what we've been really focusing on is our own growing our own body intelligence, our own willingness to embody the practice of our feelings, practice of our all the fears, of all the the worries, of all the joys and happiness, all the messy messiness and waves of emotions that are constantly rising and falling like currents in the ocean in our own bodies. How can we be with them as a way to support our present moment connections? Am I available? Can I, can I, can I go from here? And I think that's what constantly leads to like the what's next, but he's, it's growing our own body intelligence, which is really what we're excited about right now. And as massage therapists, as touch therapists, healers, light workers, sound therapists, we're all um, doing this really cool thing. We're, we're already like in and feeling ourselves, you know, we feel in ourselves, but do we be with ourselves? Um, are we pushing those feelings away? Or do we get to ride the wave all the way through to the very end of the, the sadness and grief? How can I stay with and be present for myself like I'm staying with and being present for all the people who lay down on my table? So I, I think for us right now, that the growing our body intelligence and our emotional intelligence feeds into our social intelligence and our abilities to connect with others and, and support mutual creativity. We get to to create something new, not only for ourselves, but for everybody. So what is your next step? Heath offers a couple of last words of wisdom. The times where I've had the idea and kind of held myself back, even though I'm thinking about it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, being like, that would be a really good idea. I've in the past held myself back thinking, you know what, I have to have the whole thing figured out before I take the first step. And what I'd like to let all whether you're a healing practitioner or you're just a human interested in elevated and healing and growth and discovery is taking action and putting your creative energy forward will automatically reveal the next step that is important for you. Heath and Nicole Reed's ability to drop into their own selves and create success with Living Meta, with massage therapists across the country and around the globe, is a beautiful example of how loving kindness has proven to be a door opening mindset. Members are loving ABMP 5 Minute Muscles and ABMP Pocket Pathology. Two quick reference web apps included with ABMP membership. ABMP 5-Minute Muscles delivers muscle-specific palpation and technique videos, plus origins, insertions, and actions for the 83 muscles most commonly addressed by body workers. ABMP Pocket Pathology, created in conjunction with Ruth Werner, puts key information for nearly 200 common pathologies at your fingertips and provides the knowledge you need to help you make informed treatment decisions. Start learning today. 
ABMP members log in at abmp.com and look for the links in the Featured Benefits section of your member homepage. Not a member? Learn about these exciting member benefits at abmp.com slash more.